Let's get started. Hotep, how's everybody doing today? All right, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm the talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. It is Wednesday, October 9th, 2019, and we are live. Everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. So this is an update to the uh, story, the killing of uh, Joshua Brown, who was a witness in the Amber Geiger trial. Uh, he testified on September 24th, 2019. Uh, you know you've been watching my videos. Be sure to follow us here on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. Um, you know uh, that he was uh, killed on October 4th, uh, Friday, October 4th, 2019, and a lot of the information came out uh, the following day, that Saturday. Well, on Tuesday, October 8th, 2019, uh, Dallas police uh, held a press conference and they talked about, uh, they, they announced that one suspect had been arrested, okay? And they laid out a scenario. Um, they announced one suspect has been arrested and overnight a sec second suspect has been arrested, okay? So uh, we're going to deal with uh, what has been told to us so far. Uh, I have 10 questions about the uh the killing of joshua brown uh i have some questions about uh the scenario that's being laid out now it could it's it's very well possible it could be true uh or part of it could be true part of it could not be true or all of it could not be true um you know me i don't engage in conspiracy theories i'm a researcher i deal with facts and evidence and one thing i don't do is throw out, they just put conspiracy theories out here because our people are confused enough as it is. So that's something that, that's something I don't do. Uh, but I, I have 10 questions. So we're, we're gonna deal with this. Um, I've been reading articles. I got to bed this morning at about 4 a.m. I was reading articles from ABC News, CBS, NBC News, uh, I just read the article from uh, Dallas, uh, Dallas, Mo um, uh, Dallas uh, News. What is it? Uh, Dallas Morning News. Just read that article. I've uh, read the article from WFAA Channel 8 ABC, the ABC affiliate there in Dallas. They just updated their article as well because when I when I went to bed, it was uh, they had not updated it to say that two suspects had been arrested. OK, so we're going to break this down and I'll give you these articles also. All right, so let's jump into this. Uh, and then also, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund has called for an independent investigation into the Dallas Police Department. The NAACP Legal Defense Fund has called for a independent investigation into the Dallas Police Department as well. So some of you all saw the article that I shared from uh, lawandcrime.com that talks about this, okay? All right, and then also I'm gonna give you some updates from um, attorney uh, S. Lee Merritt from his Twitter page, because I, I follow him on Twitter, and I've been following some of these updates. Okay, so first, let's look at the uh, article from abcnews.com, okay? It's actually abcnews.go.com, that's the official website. abcnews.com is a fake website. Uh, second, police captures uh, second of three suspects wanted in killing a witness in Amber Geiger trial. Okay. All right. So this is from, um, this was updated October 9th, 2019, 106 uh, AM. Okay. All right. So the second um, of three suspects wanted in connection with the murder of a witness in last month's high profile trial of uh, former Dallas police officer, Amber Geiger has been captured. Okay, Michael Mitchell is the second uh, suspect that was captured. The first suspect is Jaquarius, uh, Jaquarius Mitchell, who is in the hospital. Okay, um, Michael Mitchell was uh, captured in Marksville, Louisiana, by United States Marshals, Dallas police said Tuesday night. Now, arrest warrants were issued earlier Tuesday for three suspects in the slaying of Joshua Brown, 28 years old who tearfully testified at Amber Geiger's trial for the wrong apartment killing of Botham Shim John. 
Now, uh, and be sure to go back and watch my previous videos where I'll go through and break all this stuff down and separate the conspiracy theory from fact, okay? Uh, and watch the broadcast I did October 7th, uh, dealing with an update to uh, the killing of Joshua Brown also. All right, so um, Joshua Brown was a former neighbor of Botham Shem John, who was gunned down on Friday, October 4th, Friday night, October 4th, in what police described as a botched drug deal, okay, or an alleged botched, botched drug deal. Because no drugs from the, so far, no drugs from the, the scene of the killing have been recovered yet, okay? I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about what happened because um, Jaquarius Mitchell said that it was Thaddeus Charles Green, uh, 22 years old, who took um, Joshua Brown's backpack and took Joshua Brown's gun, okay? So possibly there were drugs in the backpack. Don't know at this point in time, but still, I have 10 questions that I'm, I'm going to lay out for you as well. All right, so um, Assistant Chief Avery Moore, I saw the press conference that uh, the Assistant Police Chief held. Also, be sure to watch the October 8th, 2019 edition of Roland Martin Unfiltered, Roland Martin Unfiltered, okay? Uh, because Roland dealt with this, Roland dealt with this new development, and I think he did a really good job of it. Also, because I saw that as well. But uh, at the press conference, Assistant uh, uh, Police Chief Avery Moore uh, said, "Quote: As you know, there's been speculation and rumors that uh, have been shared by community leaders claiming that." Uh, Mr. Brown, Joshua Brown's death was related to the Amber Geiger trial and somehow the Dallas Police Department was responsible. I assure you uh, that is simply not true. Okay, so he said this on Tuesday, October 8th at the press conference. He went on to say, and I encourage those leaders to be mindful of their actions moving forward because their words have jeopardized the integrity of the city of Dallas as well as the Dallas uh, Police Department, end quote, he said. Now, earlier this week, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and Education, uh, NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund asked for an independent investigation into Joshua Brown's death, calling it, quote, deeply alarming and highly suspicious, end quote. But they've also called, if we look at um, the article from lawandcrime.com, yes, you need an independent investigation into the killing of Joshua Brown. I said this from the beginning. OK, uh, attorney S. Lee Merritt has said this as well. I said you need to bring the FBI in. It, it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be the sheriff's department, not knocking the sheriff's department. They could do they, they may do an excellent job investigating, but 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 they're local. It should not be the Texas Rangers, as I stated in my October 7th broadcast, that because David L. Armstrong, Sergeant David, David L. Armstrong of the Texas Rangers, who was the lead investigator into the killing of both of Shem John, he testified in court, he testified in Amber Geiger's trial that he didn't believe Amber Geiger did anything wrong. He, he believed she acted in self-defense, she thought it was her apartment. He, did, he was the lead investigator. He's the one, when we look at the, when we go back and we look at the affidavit from September 9th, 2000, uh, September 9th, 2018. OK, this was the arrest warrant that the Texas Rangers issued for Amber Geiger. He he suggested manslaughter in the second degree. We know the prosecutors upgraded that to murder. But his, uh, his name is David L. Armstrong. He testified in court that Amber, so he's um, a sergeant with the Texas Rangers. He testified in court that Amber Geiger didn't do anything wrong. The Texas Rangers are the state police of Texas, they're the state police. So my, what I'm saying is no, you, you gotta have a, you have to have a federal investigation, okay? Uh, Attorney S. Lee Merritt said either the Department of Justice or the FBI, I said bring in the FBI, okay? Take it, take it out of the hands, it should not be the Dallas police. Now, Dallas police may do, it, Dallas police may do a very good job investigating, okay? Or, that, or there may be people inside the Dallas police department who may leak information, what have you. Because of the distrust and because of the leaks that happened with the, with the 
investigation into the killing of both of Shem John. Because of those leaks coming from the Dallas Police Department, you have to take the investigation out of the hands of the Dallas Police Department. Because I know that, th I don't know the exact number of police officers in the Dallas Police Department. I know that there are thousands. I know that there's some who are competent, who can do a good investigation. I know there's some who, who, who are not competent and who should not be involved in any investigation, probably should not be on the Dallas Police Department. But because of what happened, because of the leaks and improprieties, then happened that uh, attorney S. Lee Merritt has laid out dealing with the investigation of the killing of both and Shem John, Dallas Police Department should not be involved in this investigation. It should be totally taken out of their hands. Uh, Lawandcrime.com has an article, NAACP calls for independent federal investigation of Dallas Police Department after Joshua Brown's murder. OK, this is from October 7th, 2019. So what I'm going to do, just bear with me because I'm working off two laptops. I'm going to give you the links to all these articles. I want you to go read these articles as opposed to dealing with conspiracy theory bullshit floating around on social media. I want you to I'm going to give you these sources. I want you to go read these articles. OK. All right. Because I don't play those type of games. This is too serious. Okay, um, so let's go back to abcnews.com. I'll come back in, and I, I read the full statement put out by the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. I'll come back and I'll share that full statement with you, give you those links also. Okay, so arrest warrants were issued for Thaddeus Charles Green, 22 years old, Michael Diaz Mitchell, 32 years old, and Jaquarius Mitchell, 20 years old, all of Louisiana. Okay, um, uh, Assistant Police Chief Moore said. Now, he went on to say, Assistant Police Chief uh, Moore went on to say, and uh, let's see, that's uh, Chief Avery Moore, Assistant Chief Avery Moore. He went on to say that um, Thaddeus, uh, Thaddeus Charles Green, 22 years old, and the Mitchells, uh, because the, the uh, Michael Diaz Mitchell and Jaquarius Mitchell are related. The Mitchells who are related drove from Alexandria, Louisiana, on Friday, October 4th, 2019, to meet Joshua Brown for a prearranged drug deal that immediately turned bad. Okay, or let's say, so, so this, this account, this account at the, at the point of the press conference on October 8th, that account, that narrative was coming from Jaquarius Mitchell, who had been shot uh, and was in the hospital. So he, told allegedly the police what happened, all right? So um, let's say, we'll say alleged drug deal, okay? Because no drugs have been recovered yet, so we'll say alleged drug deal. Now, one of the questions I have, and I, and I, and I talked about this uh, in the October 5th broadcast uh, that I did when uh, the first broadcast I did dealing with Joshua's killing. Where is the surveillance camera footage? of Joshua's because he he was at his apartment now he moved away from the um uh cedar uh he moved away from the apartment building that both of Shem John lived where he lived across the hall from both so he doesn't live there anymore this is at his new apartment building uh and, and then it's in a more affluent area also as well so they have cameras surveillance cameras all around is there surveillance footage of him being shot is there surveillance footage of him being there even if you don't have the actual shooting is there surveillance footage of the of, of the suspects running away or driving away or anything like that we I, I haven't heard anything about surveillance camera footage okay so um i'm not saying it doesn't exist i'm just saying where is it all right so uh uh Assistant Police Chief Moore said that um, Jaquarius Mitchell allegedly told detectives how the deadly drug deal went down around 10.30 p.m. on Friday, October 4th in the parking lot of the Atera, A-T-E-R-A, Atera Apartments on Cedar Springs Road in Dallas, Texas, about six miles uh, from the Southside Flats apartment complex where Amber Geiger killed both them John in September, September 6, 2018, after mistaking his apartment for her own and assuming he was an intruder. Now, according to the reporting from Dallas Morning News, uh, the 
the apartment, the Atera Apartments is what, 3.5 miles, I think they said, away from um, the, um, the, uh, the flats, okay, from the south side flats, okay. Uh, they said it's about 3.5 miles away. Yeah, the shooting occurred about 3.5 miles from the South Side Flats complex in the Cedars, where Joshua Brown had lived across the hall from both the Shem Johns. Okay. All right. Now, quote, as they drove to the offense location, as they drove to the offense location, Thaddeus Green gets out of the vehicle, has a conversation with Joshua Brown, which escalates to physical altercations at which time Jaquarius Mitchell gets out of the vehicle and he states that Joshua Brown orders him back in to the vehicle and shoots him in the chest, end quote, okay? This is Assistant Police Chief Avery Moore um, giving an account of what uh, allegedly happened based upon what was told to the police, police detectives by Jaquarius Mitchell, okay? They're saying that, it was allegedly a drug deal that went went bad. Uh, as they drove to the offense location, Thaddeus Green gets out of the vehicle, has a conversation. Uh, Thaddeus Green, uh, Thaddeus Charles Green, 22 years old, gets out of the vehicle, has a conversation with Joshua Brown, which escalates to physical altercations, at which time Jaquarius Mitchell gets out of the vehicle, and he states that Joshua Brown orders him back into the vehicle and shoots him in the chest, end quote. Now, he said Jaquarius uh, uh, Mitchell told investigators, uh, police chief, uh, p- uh, Assistant Police Chief Moore, said Jaquarius Mitchell told investigators that he was lying inside the car when he heard two gunshots. Quote, he says Thaddeus Green shot Joshua Brown two times, end quote. Uh, this is what uh, uh, Assistant Police Chief Moore said. Now, Assistant Police Chief Moore said an autopsy performed on Joshua Brown showed that he suffered two bullet wounds to his lower extremities, two bullet wounds to his lower extremities, not his head, not his mouth, that was circulating around on social media, some more conspiracy theory nonsense, okay? He suffered two bullet wounds to his lower extremities, including one that entered and exited his body and another that entered his body just below the spine, traveled up and damaged vital organs. Okay. Now, uh, in my October, I think it was October 5th, in that broadcast, uh, at first, S. Lee, Merritt, uh, S. Lee Merritt had to correct himself on Twitter, and I'm glad he did, okay, uh, because at first he said that he was told that uh, Joshua Brown was shot in the mouth and the chest, and then he, he had corrected it on Twitter and said he was getting conflicting information about where on his body Joshua Brown was shot, okay? Um, so be, sh- be sure to follow him on Twitter at Merit Law, M E R I T at Merit Law uh, on Twitter. And, and let me see, because we'll, uh, I had that tweet up here. We'll go back to it, and I'll tell you exactly uh, what was said. But yeah, he had he had to uh, he had to correct it, and I'm glad he did. So attorney uh, attorney S. Lee Merit elis- initially tweeted that Brown had been shot in the mouth and chest. He tweeted two hours later that uh, where Brown was shot was in dispute and that he had heard from a witness that the wounds were to Brown's buttocks and side. All right. So this is why you have to wait for the facts to come out. The autopsy was done. So the medical examiner is telling where he was shot. This is why you got to wait for the facts to come out. This is why when things, a lot of times when things break, you don't see me doing broadcasts about it right away because I'm waiting for more facts to come in before I, I jump on and start reporting something. And I'm going through looking at different news sources, verifying information as well. Um, okay. So October 5th, uh, let's see, October. Yeah, that was October, October 5th. Uh, he first tweeted that uh, he was shot it, uh, in the mouth and chest. Uh, He was exiting his car at his apartment when he was ambushed and shot at close range. His mother asked my office to help find out who murdered her son. She suspects foul play. He had no known enemies. Okay, I'm coming back to that. No known enemies. So he worked for a living. We need answers. All right. Now, 
then uh, within about when I was broadcasting live, he updated, he updated, uh, he did another tweet and said, where hashtag Joshua Brown was shot seems to be disputed. I was told by immediate family that the medical examiner said mouth and chest. It wasn't mouth and chest. Initially, I was told in the back, I just heard from a witness who provided aid to a wound in the buttocks and side. We will have to await the autopsy to be sure. Okay. This is why you got to wait for the facts to come out. All right. Now, and um, I'm looking also at the reporting from WFAA Channel 8, uh, the ABC affiliate there in the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, uh, area. They have an article, Joshua Brown, a witness during the Amber Geiger murder trial, was killed in the drug deal, uh, warrant says. All right. Because I was up late looking at these different, I was up late looking at the um, reporting on this from multiple news sources. Uh, so... I got to bed late. I meant to get, I was trying to get to bed early because I got to fly to, uh, I leave uh, early Thursday morning to fly to Oakland, California to speak in Oakland this weekend. But uh, I didn't get to bed early last night and fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> okay, so it was about, uh, it was about 4 a.m. No, really it's about 5 a.m. Because I, I said I'll get up at 8 a.m. and I'll get three hours of sleep and I'll do this broadcast. So uh, <laughs> that, it didn't work out like that. All right, let's continue. Okay, let's go back to the article from uh, ABC News. How's everybody doing? Everybody share this broadcast on your Facebook page. And I haven't even gotten to all of my questions that I have because I have, I have some questions. And, it, and there may be logical answers to the questions. Everything may be legitimate, okay? But I have some questions about this as well. All right, so let's go back to the article from uh, ABC News, uh, ABC News. So Assistant Police Chief Moore said an autopsy performed on Joshua Brown showed that he suffered two bullet wounds, okay? Now, he said that after the shooting, according to Jaquarius Mitchell, Jaquarius Mitchell was the one who was shot and is in the hospital. According to Jaquarius Mitchell, um, Thaddeus Charles Green, 22 years old, took Joshua Brown's gun and backpack, and that all three sped away from the scene in what witnesses describe as a silver four-door sedan, a silver four-door sedan, okay? Assistant Police Chief Moore said, quote, Michael Mitchell was the driver. He dropped Thaddeus Green off at an unknown location, and he took Jaquarius Mitchell to Promise Hospital in Dallas to receive treatment, end quote, all right? Now, I'm not sure why he didn't take Jaquarius Mitchell to the hospital first to receive treatment or what? I don't know what happened there, but okay. Uh, so Assistant Police Chief Moore said Jaquarius Mitchell has since been transferred to Parkland Memorial Hospital where he is in police custody. Quote, we will execute a warrant for capital murder on him today. I think I have a copy of the warrant too. Dallas Morning News. And I printed up the article from Dallas Morning News. Oh, no, WFAA Channel 8. And I printed up the article from WFAA Channel 8. They had the warrant, warrant of arrest and detention. That is Charles Green. This is for, okay, yeah, this is, this is for the one for that is Charles Green. Okay. So when you look at the article from WFAA Channel 8, it has the uh, arrest warrant there as well. Okay, for... Um, uh, one of the suspects. Okay, let's continue here. Okay, so, quote, we will execute a warrant for capital uh, murder on him today, end quote. Uh, so that was October 8th. Uh, said Assistant Police Chief Moore, adding the capital murder warrant, uh, adding that capital murder warrants have also been issued for the other two suspects. Now, he said a manhunt continued on Tuesday afternoon, October 8th, 2019, for uh, Thaddeus uh, Charles Green uh, and Michael Mitchell. Now, Michael Mitchell was caught uh, overnight, okay? Michael, Michael Mitchell uh, has been caught. He was caught in Louisiana. And that uh, Dallas investigators and federal agents were in Louisiana searching for the two suspects. Um, Assistant Police Chief Moore said that said that based on, quote unquote, numerous tips related to Joshua Brown's slaying, police obtained 
and, uh, and executed a search warrant on an apartment at the Atera, uh, at the, uh, okay, I think it's pronounced uh, Atera because they have it spelled here differently, maybe a typo. They have it spelled A-L-T-E-R-A. But uh, all the other spellings I saw, it was A-T-E-R-A. Okay. All right, but anyway, I think it's um, I think it's a Terra. I think it's A T E R A. But let's continue here, and uh, I'll get a clarification. Okay, but at the uh, apartment complex where uh, Joshua Brown was living at the time of his uh, at the time of his death. He said, uh, he said police confiscated, Assistant Police Chief uh, Brown said police confiscated uh, from his unit, from his apartment, 12 pounds of marijuana, 143 grams of THC cartridges, and $4,000 in cash, okay? So, um, people are, well, uh, so it's being, the narrative is being told that apparently he was, uh, uh, allegedly a drug dealer on the side, in addition to roofing and managing Airbnbs. Okay, so so some people are asking the question, well, if he was a drug dealer also on the side, then how is it that the prosecutors didn't know about this? And how how is it the... Um, Police didn't know. Well, how is it the uh, Amber Geiger's defense team didn't know about this? And apparently the police didn't know about this either. Now, whether the police knew about this, whether the police knew that he was selling drugs or not, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, the other thing is, is if there was no indication, so hypothetically, if there are no indications, I guess, there were no outward indications to the prosecutors that he was selling drugs because he had other sources of income. If there were no outward indications of this, then the other question is, well, how would they know this? Okay, I don't know. So that causes me to ask another question. Um, attorney Esley Merritt talked about how Joshua Brown feared uh, he didn't want to testify. He feared for his life because, see, he was the victim of um, a shooting in November 2018. I talked about this before. But then more information came out, so it caused me to reflect back on that November 2018 shooting. So if we look at the article from CBSNews.com that I shared with you in the October 7th broadcast that I did, slain witness in ex-cops trial would have testified in civil case against police, okay? Now keep in mind, a civil case, ain't nobody going to prison over a civil case. Civil case, the, 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 the Bolton Shemjian family, they're suing for monetary damages. In the civil case, nobody's going to prison in the civil case. Okay, just, just, just keep that in mind. Um, so Esley Merritt said that, quote, he had, um, he had, he had been shot less than a year ago and, so, uh, and someone standing near him was killed, okay? He was reluctant to testify in this case because he had been shot at and he thought some people might want to do him harm, all right? So asked if the police could have offered Joshua Brown protection. Attorney S. Lee Merritt said, quote, if he had concerns for his safety, then the city the county had an obligation to ensure that those concerns were met. If he had concerns for his safety, then the city, the county had an obligation to ensure that those concerns were met. Okay. Now what I don't know, what I have not seen, I haven't seen any reporting on, did Joshua Brown ask the authorities, Dallas police or whoever it was for protection? I haven't seen any, reporting that he did ask for protection. Okay, now we know he was in, he, he went to California. The prosecution threatened to jail him if he did not return to testify, okay? If he 
feared for his life. He, we know he was shot. He, so he was shot in the foot, November 2018, standing outside of a Dallas uh, strip club, okay? And a person who was near him was shot and killed, all right? Uh, and, with, and that stemmed from uh, some type of altercation. And I'll give you details on this here in just a minute. Uh, that stemmed from um, an altercation with uh, somebody there uh, at the club. Okay, so my question is, if he feared uh, for his life, oh, the other thing is, that's important to note, is the person who allegedly did the shooting in November 2018, that person was arrested and is out on bond awaiting trial. Now, there's no evidence and the police are not saying there's a connection between, at this point, that there's a connection between that shooting and this one here. And they're not alleging that the, that the person who allegedly did the November 2018 shooting and shot Joshua Brown in the foot, they're not alleging that that person is any way involved in this one here. Okay, however, when, and I, I know it's his mother, his mother may not know all the details of the November 2018 shooting. That could very, very well be true, okay? And also uh, with the November 2018 shooting, um, Joshua Brown could have been just totally innocent, okay? Because uh, I'm still trying to get all the details. He could have just been totally innocent and he got into an altercation and he got shot, okay? It's not, it's not, it's not saying that he did something wrong. But um, according to attorney Esley Merritt, when his mother said that he had no known enemies, well, if he was shot in 2018, he, I guess he has at least one. Okay. Once again, doesn't mean Joshua did anything wrong, but she, and his mother may not know all the details of it. Okay. And I'm not saying that the person who did allegedly did the shooting in 2018 is involved in this one. Okay. All right. So uh, th when I do more research on this, it caused me to ask more questions. Did he ask for protection during the trial? If he feared for, if he feared retaliation, fear for that retaliation from anybody. Okay. Uh, because I, I was reading statements from attorney Lee Merritt and he was saying that he was afraid people were going to, uh, you know, finish the job, you know, uh, kill him, finish the job, et cetera. So, and then after the trial, did he ask for protection after the trial also? Because he's, he was scheduled to be, he was scheduled to testify in the civil lawsuit. Now, I'm not exactly sure when the civil lawsuit was going to happen. It was going to be relatively soon. He was scheduled to testify in the civil lawsuit. Did he ask for protection afterwards? Okay. Now, Here's the scenario. This is hypothetical. This is hypothetical because I've been good because I have a, a list of questions that I stayed up late right now. I have a list of questions front and back. So here's a hypothetical. I'm not saying it's true, but just following certain scenarios. If allegedly you are just say hypothetically, anybody, not him specifically, but anybody. If allegedly you are selling drugs on the side, hypothetically, do you want protection from the authorities? Just anybody, not specifically him, but just anybody. If, if, if you are to be a witness in a trial, a high profile trial, and you are selling drugs on the side in the prosecution don't know it, hypothetically. The defense team don't know it, hypothetically. Do you want authority? Do you, do you actually want protection from the authorities? Because one, there may be hints that you're selling drugs and they find out. Two, you ain't gonna be ha having any drug deals, okay? I'm not saying he was, I'm just saying hypothetically, when I'm going through analyzing all of this, it causes me to ask more questions. All right, so um, that's one of them. Did he ask for protection? 
Was he given protection D during the trial? Did he ask for protection? Was he given protection? I haven't seen any, anything indicating he actually asked for protection during the trial. Don't know. Still trying to find out. If you have some evidence, let me know. All right. Okay, so let's continue here. But this causes me to deep, the deeper I dig into this. And like I said, prior, prior to this broadcast, I, I'd read 80 articles dealing with this case, dealing with the Botham Shem, Botham Shem John killing and then the trial and all this stuff. I've read over 80 articles dealing with this. Hell, I just read six preparing for this broadcast in addition to the previous 80. So it just caused me to ask more questions. I've, I've studied numerous, I've been doing radio nine years, okay? I've studied numerous police cases, numerous police shootings, all those types of things. So really nothing surprises me. I've seen all types of, I've seen all types of information come out. So nothing surprises me either. Um, all right, let's continue here. Okay, let's go back to uh, ABC News. And then we'll come to uh, uh, some quick comments. Let me, okay, while this, uh, refer okay, it was frozen for a minute here. I got about 50 tabs open on the main laptop. Uh, let's see who we have here. Um, to, to, yeah, he was on the prosecution side. Oh, okay, you respond, okay, uh, Charlotte was responding to, respond to somebody. Yeah, he's on the prosecution side. Yeah, he was a witness for the prosecution, okay? Um, Carlisa, let's see, Carlisa, Charlotte, Jacqueline, Clear, Vicky, um, Vicky. No, I'm not smearing our brother. I'm asking a question. I do research. I'm asking the question, Vicky. I ain't smearing the brother. I'm just talking about hypothetically. I'm asking a question. I'm following what's being laid out and asking a question. All right, Eric, Chantel, Derek. Carlisa, Donald, okay, just a few people watching. Everybody share this broadcast. Uh, ask your friends to tune in also. And I'll give, you the, I'll give you the links to all these articles here as well. All right, so let's continue this here. Um, we understand, okay, let's see. Okay, we understand, we leave off here. Okay, so once again, Dallas, I saw the press conference that um, Assistant Police Chief Moore did. And the Dallas police should not be investigating this case. For there's a number of problems. The Dallas police should not be investigating this case. It should it should it, should, it shouldn't even be state. It should be federal investigated. Um, and attorney attorney Lee Merritt has been asking from the, from the beginning of the killing of Joshua Brown. He's been asking for. Um, outside investigators kept for outside investigators come in either state or federal. Okay. I think he may have mentioned the sheriffs, but that, to me, the sheriffs are too close. All right. So what do we leave off? Okay. Uh, assistant police chief, uh, Avery Moore expressed condolences to Joshua Brown's family saying, quote, we in the, uh, Dallas business, uh, department grieve with you, end quote. We understand how hard it is and how much pain is related to losing a loved one. No family member uh, should have suffered. No family member should have suffered. Uh... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, Vicky. I apologize, Vicky. Sorry. I didn't realize you were replying to another comment, Vicky. Vicky's cool. Okay. Okay, Vicky sent me a message saying I made that comment to a prior comment. Okay, Vicky, that's cool. No problem. I apologize. Um, let's see. So Brown previously lived in an apartment across the hall from both. Okay, we know that. I'm skipping over some stuff that's redundant, everybody. Just bear with me here. Okay, um, Joshua Brown contradicted Amber Geiger's testimony that she asked John to show her his hands before she opened fire, saying on the witness stand that he never heard Geiger say that. Now, he, uh, he testified that he was like in a hallway nearby where the shooting took place, okay? So he didn't actually see the shooting, but he heard two shots and he, and he heard something being said, okay? Um, in the... Uh, the attorney Daryl Washington, 
Daryl Washington was uh, interviewed by Roland Martin on the Tom Joe in the Morning Show. Daryl Washington talked about how uh, a lot of the testimony that Joshua Brown gave was also basically the same testimony from other witnesses. But Joshua Brown testified to uh, hearing both and Shim John singing gospel songs because he didn't know both of them. He met both of them earlier the same day that both of them was killed because um, somebody from the property management team or somebody from the apartment complex, uh, maintenance, uh, the uh, manager, whatever it was, from the apartment complex, uh, came to Bolton's apartment and his apartment regarding a noise complaint, okay? So he only met Bolton a few hours before Bolton was killed. But he testified about hearing Bolton singing gospel songs, singing Drake, things like this, right? Okay, so, but he... Um, he contradicted Amber Geiger's testimony that she asked both them John to show her, her his hands before she opened fire saying on the witness stand that he never heard Geiger say that. Now, Joshua Brown, so we know he became emotional. He broke down crying, things like this on the witness stand. Um, okay. Skip over that. Okay, so Joshua Brown was a former football player at the University of South Florida in Tampa, uh, was previously shot in November 2018 during an altercation outside at Dallas nightclub uh, that, that I talked about as well. And I'll give you all these links. Okay, attorney S. Lee Merritt, who's, in the, who's the, uh, an attorney for the Bolton Shem John family, told WFAA Channel 8 on Sunday that Joshua Brown had been nervous about testifying in Amber Geiger's trial. Quote, he was concerned that someone would try to come finish the job, end quote. He was concerned that someone would come, uh, someone would try and come and finish the job, okay? Despite his, despite his reluctance to testify in the criminal case against Amber Geiger, um, Attorney Esley Merritt said he had planned to ask Joshua Brown to take the witness stand again in a civil case that the Botham Shem John family has filed against the city of Dallas, stemming from the fatal shooting of Botham. Okay. Attorney Esley Merritt said, quote, when we move forward with our civil trial, he was one of the first people we planned on calling, end quote. Quote, and now is no longer available, end quote. Now, while uh, attorney S. Lee Merritt acknowledged there was no evidence that Joshua Brown's slaying was linked to law enforcement or to the trial directly, he insisted it was something worth investigating. And I agree, it's something, it's something worth investigating. One, two, the Dallas Police Department should not be investigating this killing, period, okay? And it, like I said, look, I know you have, I know you have some, investigators in the Dallas Police Department who are competent and can do a good job. But because of optics, because of the leaks that took place uh, in the investigation of Botham's killing, all, all, because of all that stuff that took place, no, they should not be involved, all right? Okay, so that's ABC News. And uh, we'll give you that one. It's freezing up on me. Okay, but we're going to keep, all right. Also, um, everybody follow us, follow us here on the Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Click on uh, the notification button so you know when we go live. If you like this type of information, also you could donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. It helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, buy this paper and ink to print all this stuff up. <laughs> and it helps cover, it helps when I have to, uh, helps cover expenses when I have to pay to travel uh, to speak at different, uh, speak out of state as well, okay? Uh, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show or at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com uh, as well, okay? Right on the homepage, click on the yellow donate button. All right, let's continue. So, the, uh, which article we want to go to next, uh, NBCnews.com uh, has an article dealing with this as well. Joshua Brown murder, uh, Joshua Brown murder, second arrest and death of witness in Amber Geiger trial. I'm going to come to these other questions I have about this as well. I just want to give you the, the facts as we know it right now, then I'll come to these questions. Uh, let's see. So Michael Mitchell, 32, who uh, officials say was the suspected a getaway driver in the Friday night slang was arrested at a motel in Marksville, Louisiana. 
Tuesday evening. Um, the uh, Ovales, A-V-O-Y-E-L-L-E-S, Parish Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy Stephen Martell said. This was a development overnight. Uh, so, Jaquarius Mitchell, 20 years old, had previously been arrested and was in custody at a hospital, Dallas Police uh, Assistant Chief Avery Moore said at a press conference on Tuesday. Uh, Jaquarius Mitchell told police that Brown shot him in the chest after Green and Brown got into an altercation during a drug deal and that Green then shot Brown twice, uh, Assistant Police Chief Moore said, okay? So we know they claim that they confiscated drugs, et cetera from his uh, apartment. So I'm, I'm waiting to see um, a few things. Okay, on Tuesday, okay, I'll come to that in just a second. On Tuesday, attorney Esley Merritt released a statement on behalf of the Brown family calling uh, for the Dallas Police Department to turn the investigation over to another agency. Quote, this family and their representatives have consciously avoided speculating about law enforcement involvement about law enforcement involvement in this tra tra tragedy. However, due to the proximity of this murder with the trial of Amber Geiger, rumors abound, the statement said, in part, quote, a cloud of suspicion will rest over this case until steps are taken to ensure the trustworthiness of the process. A cloud of suspicion will rest over this case until steps are taken to ensure the trustworthiness of this process, end quote. I totally agree. I don't understand. Now, the police chief, uh, Renee Hall, you, her first initial you, you, Renee Hall, is from the Detroit Police Department, okay? And I live in Detroit. I, and this is not an attack on her at all. I don't understand because of all the problems with the investigation into the killing of Bolton Shem John, and you're dealing with a, a, a Dallas police officer, I don't understand why you would not bring in independent outside investigators to investigate this case. Now, Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson asked the public in the tweet over the weekend to, quote, refrain from speculation, end quote, about both of them shooting, all right? I'm skipping over to all the redundant stuff, okay? So just um, I have things highlighted and marked and checked and all that stuff, okay? So I'm just skipping over just to give you the meat of it. That's NBC News. I gave you ABC News already. CBS uh, news is pretty is pretty redundant, so we don't have to do CBS. I'll just give you the link for that. Okay, um, NAACP Legal Defense Fund is calling for an independent investigation, one of this case, but also an investigation into the Dallas Police Department. All right. So while that loads up, um, here's some questions I have. Dallas, and, and shout out to everybody that just tuned in as well, okay? Shout out to everybody that just tuned in also. Um, share this broadcast uh, on your Facebook page. Be sure to follow us here on the African History Network. Um, one, Dallas police should have brought in the FBI to investigate, okay? Uh, two, where is the surveillance footage of the killing of Joshua Brown? Three, if some, so uh, uh, immediately, when Joshua was killed, people automatically suspected the doubt that somebody, somebody inside the Dallas police, I'm not saying the entire Dallas police department, but immediately people suspected, wait a second, is this connected to the Amber Geiger trial? Does somebody in Dallas police department have something to do with this, right? So let's, let's, let's follow this scenario. If someone on the Dallas police force wanted to retaliate against Joshua Brown, police be the first suspect? Just hypothetically, right? Now you may have somebody stupid that did something. I'm not saying they did, I'm not saying they did it. But when I go research this, it caused me to ask questions. The deeper I dig, whenever I research cases like this, it, the deeper I dig, it caused me to ask more, more questions. So if somebody, on the Dallas police force, hypothetically, wanted to retaliate, did not somebody, the Dallas police department would be the first suspects, okay, one. Um, and then also what this would do is increase the tensions that are already existing there in the community, 
okay? So it would, it, would, it would totally make things worse. Now, it could be, but it doesn't have to be. Next, let's look at this strategically. So if I was going to retaliate, not say it, but if I was going to retaliate, I would orchestrate a better story than this. If, if I, th 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 these three brothers live like four hours away from Dallas, Texas, and they're traveling, they're traveling four hours to buy drugs from him, and nobody knows, well, nobody outwardly knows that he sells drugs. If, if I was going to orchestrate something, not saying I would, if I was going to orchestrate something, I would come up with a better story than this. So when you got something, I mean, I sit back and look at this and I'm just, I follow the leads. This is why I want more information. I want more evidence to come out. I want more information. But if I was to orchestrate something, it's going to be more believable than this. I'm just saying. Um. And like I said, his mother said he had no known enemies and, you know, um, that's her baby. Totally understand that. But what we do know is that November 2018, when he was shot outside of the uh, Dallas nightclub um, and not and not saying he did anything to warrant being shoot, shot. But that person who shot him is out on bond awaiting a trial. Not saying that that person had anything to do in the stories and not saying that, but we know there's at least one person out there that ain't too fond of them. Okay. All right. And once again, you know, that's his mother. She may not know all, she may not know all the details of that shooting that took place in 2018 as well. Um, So there was a, so also there was a social media post. I think uh, WFAA Channel 8 reported this. There was a social media post that said after he testified, uh, he testified on September 24th in the Amber Geiger trial. There was a social media post that said, now we know where you are. And then the post was deleted, okay? I think it was WFAA Channel 8 that reported that. I'm gonna find that. Um, but but there was but there was a social media post that was removed. Okay, who did that post? The authorities can find because when you delete stuff, it's still available the, in the news media. I forgot it's called the Wayback Machine. It's called the Wayback Machine, and you delete Facebook Facebook posts, things like that. In the, in, in, in the media news outlets, they got a way to go back and retrieve that stuff. So who posted that tweet? Okay, that's, that's, that's a question that I have. Now, a lot of people don't know this. And um, I can't remember if that was in one of the articles or in the, uh, S.D. Mayor tweeted that. Okay, but I'll try to find that for you. All right, so that's that's number five. One, two, three. Actually, that's number six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. NAACP Legal Defense Fund calling for an investigation into the Dallas Police Department. Um, that ain't gonna happen with Donald Trump in office because Donald Trump and his attorney generals have stopped the investigations into the patterns and practices of police departments. This is an example of how elections have consequences. I talked about this in the October 7th broadcast. This is an example of how elections have consequences because there were 25, 24, 25 investigations into the, into the patterns and practices of police departments under President Barack Obama. Okay, that has stopped and that led to 14 or 15 consent decrees. Okay, that, that, uh, uh, is stopped under under Trump, okay? That is stopped under Trump. And we know that his attorney general, Jefferson Borgar Sessions III, his first attorney general, said that they were basically gonna take a hands-off approach. They were gonna back up off of policing. When, when Jeff Sessions became attorney general, 
he said that um, he tried to back out of the consent decrees with the Chicago Police Department and the Baltimore Police Department. He tried to back out of those. So this, this, this administration here has taken a total hands-off approach to policing. This is an example of how elections have consequences. This is, try, this is what I'm trying to explain to people in 2016 who still haven't figured out what the hell happened. That was, I was explaining to them what was at risk because I had looked at Trump's platform and I, and, I, and I listened to, I saw over 100 campaign speeches and interviews that Trump gave during the 2016 election. So I already knew what that was about. I already knew what he's about. That's why I was warning our people about it. And you see what's going on right now. I tried to tell you, people ain't want to listen. All right, let's continue. Um, so, no, uh, okay, I'll come back to this. Because from the start, conspiracy theories were spreading from the, from, the, from, the, from the beginning when both of them was killed. Conspiracy theories were spreading. And people just wanted to, just, people just wanted there to be a relationship between both of them and Amber Geiger, and there wasn't. They just, they just had to have some conspiracy theories. Why wouldn't you just let the facts come out? But NAACP Legal Defense Fund, NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund is calling for an independent investigation into the murder of Joshua Brown, uh, who was shot and killed Friday, October 4th in Dallas. The next, the next door neighbor of Botham, uh, okay, uh, the, motor, the murder of Botham John has raised troubling concerns from the beginning of the investigation, and now the deeply alarming and highly suspicious murder of Joshua Brown increases the uh, hold on, increases the urgency of an immediate independent investigation of every aspect of these two tragic killings, okay? A, a Sunday evening press release from the NAACP notes. Let me scroll down. Okay, Brown's shooting death immediately prompted widespread outrage that his safety uh, was not tended to, plus um, unsubstantiated speculation that he was murdered in reprisal for his testimony against Amber Geiger by rogue elements or otherwise within the Dallas Police Department. So this is from lawandcrime.com. They have some very, very good reporting on this. Lawandcrime.com. They also did an interview with uh, S. Lee Merritt as well. Um, uh, uh, attorney S. Lee Merritt, the attorney for Botham John's family in a, in a civil exorcist suit against the city of Dallas, stoked the notion that Joshua Brown was taken out for revenge over his testimony by revealing details of where the 28 year old victim was allegedly shot. Okay. So I talked about this. Esley Merritt corrected that on his Twitter page. All right. Um, Law and crime previously reported that Joshua Brown was expected to be called as a witness in that civil trial in the civil trial. Esley Merritt's characterization of where the bullets entered uh, Joshua Brown's body, however, have been disputed by Dallas area authorities. So we know based upon the medical examiner, that's not true, okay? So we, we know that. You can read this, and you can go back and read the rest of this. Um, Cher Cheryl and Eiffel, who's the sister of Gwen Eiffel, the journalist, the sister used to be on PBS NewsHour, who passed away. Cheryl and Eiffel, the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational, Educational Funds President and Director Counsel said in the press release, the circumstances surrounding the murder of Mr. Brown cries out for answers. More importantly, it depends, it is a, more importantly, it demands an independent investigation of how and why he was killed. Independent investigation into why and how he was killed, okay? All right, we'll continue with that. Uh, so, I'll go to number seven on my list here. So from the start, people were spreading conspiracy theories about both them, Shim John and Amber Geiger. And they were just claiming, they just, they just were saying that they thought they were in a relationship and all this stuff. I had people calling in my radio show, 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF here in Detroit, Sunday nights, uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. the African History Network show. I had people calling in and just insisting there was a relationship. So attorney S. Lee Merritt was on CNN, um, a couple, two, three weeks after Bolton was killed, he said they reviewed text messages, they reviewed emails, they reviewed social media posts, all that stuff. There was absolutely no connection. There was no interaction between Bolton and 
uh, Amber Geiger. There's no relationship, no messages going back and forth, nothing. But people just, for some reason, just had to manufacture some jungle fever relationship. I don't know why, okay? Why wouldn't you just let the facts come out? Then you had somebody that went on Botham's Instagram account, took a picture of him with three white women, these were co-workers of his at PricewaterhouseCoopers. They circled one of the pictures, the, the woman on the end, they circled her picture, circulated around on social media, and they said, this is Amber Geiger, this is the guy that killed, this is the woman that killed him. One, the woman was not a police officer. Two, it wasn't Amber Geiger. Three, that was a friend of his. So now you just accuse somebody just totally innocent, and you just circulated their picture around like this, okay? So, and, and, and see, this is, this is what I had to tell my listeners on my show. You can't, man, you can't make up evidence and then claim you want a fair trial. You can't manufacture evidence and then claim you want a fair trial. You have to let all the facts come out. Okay? And, and the other thing is, because I've, I've studied numerous police cases, you can't go in suspecting what it is. What, you can't go in suspecting what you think it is. Because if you go in already suspecting what you think it is, you're going to miss some things. You're going to miss some pieces of evidence to, to, to show you, no, it may not be what you think it is. That's why you have to let all the evidence comes out, come out. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. So I already, I already talked about that as well. But from the start, conspiracy theories were floating around. All right. Number eight. I got to go to the, to the other side, to the other side of the page. Uh, so he didn't want to testify. He feared for his life. So Esley Merritt on his Twitter page, I think it was uh, October 7th, he posted a clip of Judge uh, Tammy Kemp. Now, the previous day, October 6th, just keep in mind, when you read, read his post from October 6th, and I shared it in my October 7th broadcast, he talked about how Judge Tammy Kemp saved, the, saved that case, saved that trial, kept it from being kept it from having a change of venue okay one two did not let the jury hear testimony from two law enforcement uh agents who said that um uh, amber geiger didn't do anything wrong in acting in self-defense one of them was the lead investigator for the texas rangers david l armstrong he testified but the judge did not allow the jury to hear that testimony because that's a that's an opinion okay that's opinion so it, it, go read his october 6th tweet and it's a uh, like a jpeg of uh, his full statement okay where he breaks this down he talks about people attacking her he talks about how we need unity because he talks about um we have to expose and correct the corruption inside the dallas police department he gave examples of this he broke he went and broke this down okay uh he talked about attacks on both them's brother all this stuff so my October 7th broadcast, I go through and fairly uh, break all that down. But uh, number eight, the question I have is, did Joshua Brown ask for protection during the trial? Did he ask for protection from the authorities? And did they grant protection? Did they issue protection? What? What? I haven't found any information on that. Number nine, um, Apparently, no drugs were recovered at the scene of this killing. The question is, were they? Okay, and then uh, um, the other thing I want to know is how much, how much drugs were they allegedly trying to buy? That's something else I want to know. I haven't heard that. How much drugs were they allegedly trying to buy? All right. Um, and then the tenth question I have, outside of the statements from Jaquarius uh, Mitchell, what evidence do they have of an alleged drug deal? Outside of the statements of the guy who was shot and is in the hospital, what evidence do they have of an alleged, alleged drug deal? It could be, it could be a drug deal. Maybe not, don't know. I'm still trying, I'm, this is coming out. But, but besides his statements, what other evidence do they have of an alleged drug deal? Okay. Uh, so those, so those are some questions I have. This is a, uh, this is a crazy case, but when you have conspiracy theories floating around, it makes it even worse. 
Okay. Let's see. So check out the article from longcrime.com uh, also. And there was one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip over here because this computer is frozen up, but it's still running. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip over to the second computer and I'm going to go to um, give an update from Lee Merritt's Twitter page as well. Be sure to follow him on Twitter um, at Merritt, M-E-R-I-T dot, uh, at Merritt, M-E-R-I-T law. Okay. At Merritt, M-E-R-I-T law on Twitter. Um, okay. So he tweeted, I'm glad that DPD believes that they have the suspects in the Brown killing identify all i ask is that they have another law enforcement agency take over to make sure all the bases are covered due to the circumstances in the case totally agree okay and then let's see we have um let me see here hold on somebody send me a message here okay there was one other one All right, let's look at this. Okay, there was a statement put out by his uh, law firm, October 8th, Lee Merritt Esquire, on behalf of, can we blow this up? Because my eyes are not what they used to be. Hold on. Can we blow this up? Hold on. Let's see. I know I wear glasses, but I'm looking away. Okay, on behalf of the family of Joshua Brown, the office encourages the Dallas Police Department to turn over this murder investigation to an alternate investigative agency. This family and their representatives have consciously avoided speculating about involvement in this tragedy. However, due to the proximity of this murder with the trial of Amber Geiger, rumors abound it will be nearly impossible, it will be nearly impossible to conduct a reliable investigation in a climate where the investigating agency has been implicated in the murder itself. I totally agree. This is why I, 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 still, I still don't understand why Police Chief Renee Hall has not called in um, an outside uh, um, agency. And go federal. Don't do the Texas Rangers. Go federal. I don't. I don't understand it with the climate. That's with the climate there because whatever the Dallas police put out, people are not going to believe it, even if it's true. Whatever they put out, people you're going to have a, a a large swath of the community that's not going to believe it. And part of it, I, I mean, I could understand. Okay, let's continue here. Um. That implication naturally stems from a trial where a Dallas police officer was convicted of murder and other DPT officers were shown to have participated in con uh, uh, condemnable behavior in destroying evidence and interfering with the investigation. Exactly. Okay. After I read this, I'm going to go back to, the, to his, his, his tweet from October 6th, I think it was, where he goes through and he breaks down how the Dallas police destroyed evidence, how the Dallas police interfe interfered into this investigation. This is why they can't, they, this is why they should not be involved in investigating Joshua's murder or his killing. Okay. Um, let's continue here. Okay, so that implication naturally stems from a trial where a Dallas police officer was convicted of murder and other DPD officers were shown to have participated in uh, condemnable behavior in destroying evidence and interfering with the investigation. It is important for everyone involved that this case not only be solved, but the conclusion arrived uh, to the, the conclusion arrived to by investigators be seen as authentic and reliable, as authentic and reliable. A cloud of suspicion will rest over this case until steps are taken to ensure the trustworthiness of the process. The Brown family, the jo Joshua Brown family, 
would like to extend their heartfelt gratitude to everyone around the country that has offered them support and encouragement during their time of bereavement, okay? So that was from October 8th, 2019. That was a um, statement from the family of Joshua Brown uh, through um, their attorney, Esley Merritt, okay? So that's from his Twitter page. Now, there was, I, I want to go back to the, um, uh, yeah, and also, and then he tweeted on October 8th also, the state knew Joshua Brown didn't want to testify due to concerns for his safety. He flew to California when the trial began. They threatened him with jail if he didn't return. He went straight from the airport to court. Dallas County has a duty to protect him. They failed. When he went from the airport to court, did he have protection? When he left the court, after he testified, did he have protection? I don't know. I'm trying to find out. Okay. Uh, and then he, because uh, he posted a, 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 a clip here of a Judge Tammy Kemp saying, uh, uh, after, after the witness asked to be excused, she said, uh, of course, I'm surprised uh, he came. Okay. And then let's see, which one was that? I want to... Okay, and there's one more here from uh, the one I shared in my October 7th broadcast. But since we're talking about the, uh, the the Dallas police, this is important here. Joshua Brown, next to neighbor. He talked about what we're going to need is unity. This was from... Um, Okay, that's October 5th. Hold on. Which tweet is that? Okay, just a second, I gotta go back. I think that's from uh, the 6th. Let me go back to the 6th. Because what he did was he laid out some of the, uh, yeah, here we go. October 6th, figuring out what happened to Joshua Brown will take something we just haven't mastered yet. Unity. U-N-I-T-Y. Okay. Oh, Lord, this thing is small as here. Hold on. Hold on. My eyes are not what they used to be. Just a second here. Let's see here. Let me blow this up, man. God dog. All right. Let me try to save this and blow this up. Hold on. All right, don't laugh at my eyesight. Some of you all, your, your eyesight is not what it used to be either. It's just the print is like really small. Okay, I saved it. Let's try to blow this up. Save it as a JPEG. Let's look at this. All right, there we go. That's better. All right, that's better. Okay, so um, I'm going to skip past some of this for the sake of time because I have to get out of here as well. But he said that um, he said, take the Amber Geiger trial, for example, because he's talking about how we're going to need unity as African-Americans to fight against all these things out here as opposed to fighting against each other. All right. Uh, he said, take the Amber Geiger trial, for example, it revealed corruption at every level in the city of Dallas. Amber Geiger's part partner, Martin Rivera, openly admitted destroying evidence violating departmental policy, committing perjury. He has faced little to no uh, blowback. He is still a Dallas police officer to, to this day. The Dallas Police Association president, Mike Mata, M-A-T-T-A, M-A-T-T-A, showed up to Botham's apartment the night he was murdered and interjected himself into that investigation, actively conspiring to protect Amber Geiger. He instructed she be taken out of custody. 
that body cam and dash cam videos be halted and began crafting a narrative to get her off on camera, to get her off on camera. He, he, so he's saying he, he, the, the, he, he's accusing the um, president of the Dallas Police Association, which is their union, okay? President Mike Mata, he's accusing him of concocting, crafting a narrative to get Amber Geiger off while the cameras are still rolling, okay? This is when they're at Botham's apartment, okay, the night that he's killed. We are not, uh, so the DOJ, Department of Justice, needs to be auditing the entire department. That's an investigation into the patterns and practices of police departments. That used to happen under the Obama administration is not happening under the Trump administration. We should be we should be hounding the mayor and police chief nonstop to clean house. We are not though. The vast majority of our bandwidth has been directed at telling an 18 year old how to grieve, how to properly grieve. Okay, Bolton's brother Brand, and go back and watch October 7th and October 5th because I went and broke all that stuff down. In October 7th, I shared the uh, interview that just Tammy Kemp did also explaining what happened as well. The other thing is, if you saw my YouTube video, right, for October 7th and October 5th, I posted a picture of just Tammy Kemp hugging Botham's mother. Most people don't know that she hugged Botham's family as well. Why didn't the pictures of Judge Tammy Kemp hugging Botham's mother go viral like the picture, like the pictures of Judge Tammy Kemp hugging Amber Geiger? My October 5th broadcast where I talked about how we're being distracted with forgiveness and I talked about how the white controlled media is pushing out one narrative and they're pushing out this picture over here, but, but, but the, uh, but, but, the other narratives like about how just Tammy Kemp saved the case, uh, the other narratives about how um, uh, if this had been five or 10 years ago, there would, not, there would not have been a trial because the prosecutors would have followed the lead of the lead investigator, who was the Texas Ranger, uh, Sergeant David L. Armstrong, who, who, who said that uh, uh, Amber Geiger didn't do anything wrong. Uh, it was self-defense. She mistakenly thought she was in her apartment. And five or 10 years ago, prosecutors would have followed the lead investigator and they would not have prosecuted. But the prosecutors here didn't, didn't, didn't follow that and they prosecuted anyway. Five or 10 years ago, you would not have had a trial. Why wasn't that the dominant narrative? How did, how, why did the white control media choose forgiveness, which, take, which took place, that, that, that took place after the sentencing was rendered by the judge because the I'm sorry by the jury because the judge did not come up with the sentence that was the jury. A lot of people saw the Good Morning America interview with the two jurists, and that stuff didn't make no sense whatsoever. But anyway, but the question we have to ask the, the question we have to ask is why did the white control media choose the image to make go viral of Judge Tammy Kemp? hugging Amber Geiger, but they ain't push the image of Judge Tammy Kemp hugging Bolton's mother. Most of us haven't even seen that. That's why on the, the thumbnail for my YouTube video I did October 7th and 5th, that's why I put that there. They would, they would, the white control media, they were there in the courtroom when it happened. They took pictures. Why didn't they show that to us? Okay, let's go back to this tweet and then the first computer uh, unfroze. So we'll go back to this law and crime article. All right, so just give me a minute here. Um, the black female judge that prevents, so, so here, here Esley Mayor breaks this down. And this is what a lot of people are not telling you, okay? The vast majority of our bandwidth has been directed at, a, at telling an 18 year old how to properly grieve because Brant John was 17 when his big brother Bolton was killed. The black female judge that prevented the Texas Rangers from tanking this case with their biased conclusions 
is currently being destroyed socially and under formal review professionally because he had a human moment after the case was completely over. Why are we so anxious to attack black women while ignoring injustices? I've read articles condemning my office's financial interest in this case. Our community has joined in reaffirming the greedy black lawyer caricature that white supremacists use to denounce justice efforts. Now, Joshua Brown is dead and instead of coming together, trolls have gone so far as to say his blood is on my hands, which is S. Lee Merritt talking, on my hands personally. We have real enemies. We have, we have real work to do. We have to stop this self-destructive tendency to implode and fight each other. Let's bring the fight to them. It will require something rare, unity. Hashtag it's on us, okay? So read that post. Let me see. I'm going to uh, post the link here for you on the thread of the broadcast. This was um, from October 6th. And he has a picture of Joshua Brown here also uh, in the tweet. This is from October 6th. Let's post this here on the thread. It was shown, uh, Sean said it was shown on FBI. Now, what, what was shown on FBI, Sean? What, what are you referring to? I missed something. Okay, separation of church and state. That was after the that was after the trial was over. That was totally after the trial was over. Go watch the interview. Actually, go uh, CBS, the CBS affiliate Channel Eleven. They did an interview with Judge Tammy Kemp, where she breaks all this stuff down. And also, the Associated Press did an interview. I read the interview that she did with the Associated Press. The Grill.com picked up that article. I talked about it in my October 7th broadcast, read the, read the full interview. But uh, also I saw the interview that she actually did with uh, CBS. That was, to that was totally after the trial. That was after the sentencing, after all that stuff was done. The cameras were still rolling. Now someone can make the argument, well, she should have turned off the cameras. And then the, the other thing, she, she talked about how it was Amber Geiger that asked her for a hug. She asked her twice for a hug. That's not something that she just went and, and volunteered, okay? So go put all this in the full context because people are getting pieces, bits and pieces of information. And I can tell you haven't even watched the interview that she did with the CBS affiliate there in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. Because I, I, I saw the article. I'll post that link here. That went, and then I, uh, but before that, I read the, interview that the Associated Press did with just Tammy Kemp also. All right. It was on Facebook and uh, what was on Facebook and ABC, et cetera, Sean. Okay, so we posted that link there from um, his Twitter page. Okay, and then we've got law and crime uh, that hasn't fully loaded, so don't worry about that. All right, let's continue here. I think it's. Uh, I think it may just be one more article. I think I got through most of the ones I wanted because I printed up NBC News. We already did NBC News and then uh, Dallas Morning News. And Dallas Morning News really has like the best day-to-day -day coverage uh, of this. Okay, so we got that. I made notes here on the article in Dallas Morning News. So I just want to make sure I get to all of them. Some of this is redundant. And official posting, okay. I was trying to find that statement. Uh, 
there's no link. California, Dallas, for these asked for the one. Okay. That is the arrest warrant. All right. I think it may have been in one of his tweets that Esley Merritt did, but he talked about how there was a social media post uh, right after uh, Joshua testified and the social media post was removed. And it said that um, now we know who you are. So my question is, okay, is that being investigated? Because even though it's removed, there's still ways to um, recover it, okay? Even though it's removed, there's still ways to recover it. So are, are authorities investigating that? All right, so as uh, developments come out, I'll keep you all updated. We'll post the uh, links here to the thread of the broadcast. Uh, let's see. So listen to our show Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the African History Network show, usually broadcast here uh, uh, live for that. And I'm in the studios at 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF if they're not preempting my show with uh, the white man's baseball games. It's a whole nother story. Uh, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show that helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting. Uh, and then also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. I will be, let's see, uh, October, weekend of October 12th, I will be in Oakland, California for the Black Agenda Tour with uh, Michi X and uh, young activists and others. Um, visit the theblackagendamovement.com, theblackagendamovement.com. Uh, for more information, we also have the information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, and then we'll be in um, October 26th, we'll be in Washington, D.C. October 26th, we'll be in Washington, D.C. for the Black Agenda Tour. So information at the website, uh, BlackAgendaMovement.com. You can get tickets there. The weekend of October 18th, uh, October 18th and 19th, I am at Hartford Memorial Baptist Church in Detroit. Hartford Memorial Baptist Church in Detroit. I have the posted flyer on our on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. I'm speaking at the Social Justice Ministry. Um, they do a social justice ministry each year. So I usually speak there. I'm doing workshops on uh, Saturday, Saturday morning, dealing with uh, their theme this year is dealing with black migrations and, uh, and 400 years, 1619 to 2019. So I'm doing a workshop dealing with black migration, 1619 to 2019, from the birth of a nation to the red summer, 1919 to the um, uh, Detroit race ride of 1943, okay? So we'll get that flyer up at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. They have information to uh, purchase tickets for the social justice ministry. And there is a panel discussion that I'm on that Friday, Friday evening, October 18th. Uh, they're going to show the movie Brother Future, and they're going to have a panel discussion, and they're going to have like youth involvement as well, okay? Uh, so they do some good things at Hartford Memorial Baptist Church in Detroit. All right. I don't have all the details in front of me. I'm getting booked for all this stuff. So uh, <laughs> we'll have it at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay. Let me go to some of your comments here quickly here. Um, okay, Jonathan. Okay, somebody said, I have commented about Rivera and get crickets. Okay, I, I missed your comment. What, what did you say about Rivera? I just talked about uh, Martin Rivera. That was the uh, that was the partner of Amber Geiger. Okay, but what what did you say? Uh, I guess it was Jonathan. What what did you say about Martin Rivera? Merritt knew that Brent wanted uh, physically show Amber that she was forgiven. Uh, do you see the interview where he says that as an attorney, he absolutely can advise a client on what actions they should take. Well, he was on the, he was on the witness. He, he was on the stand. Brant was on the stand. Now, if you watch the, uh, if you watch the press conference from October 4th, that global news did from October 4th, and I've talked about this before, uh, the family was there at, at this press conference and attorney S. Lee Merritt. And he said that two minutes before 
Brandt uh, uh, gave his impact statement because this is after this is after the um, verdict had been given, and this is the impact statement during sentencing deliberation. He said two minutes before that, um, Brandt wasn't going to speak. Okay, and he just decided to speak. Okay, so I don't, I, I, I haven't seen any indication that Attorney S.D. Merritt knew that Brant was going to ask to hug Amber Geiger. I haven't seen any indication of that. Here's the link to the um, to the video. It's from October 4th, 2019, Global News. Botham John's family thanks community for support, reacts to video of brother hugging Geiger. And you see um, Botham's mother, Allison John, speaking. All right, but we need to separate the fact from the fiction. And the facts need to come out on this case, definitely. Um, so let's see here. Okay, it was in all the news media, ABC, just kept hugging John. Yeah, but it didn't go viral. It wasn't pushed out front. When you look at the, okay, so this is what Sean said. When you look at, I, I saw numerous articles coming across my timeline. I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis. I subscribe to all of them through Facebook. All the local news outlets, national news outlets, the articles that came across my timeline from all these news sources with articles written about Brant John hugging Amber Geiger and then also showing Judge Tammy Kemp hug, hugging Amber Geiger. Those were the pictures they had in the thumbnail of the articles. The, the, it, it, it wasn't the picture in, in, in nine times out of ten, it wasn't the picture of Judge Tammy Kemp hugging Allison John, Bolton's mother. That was not the dom that was not the dominant picture that the white control media put out there when they were, when they were, when when they were talking about forgiveness and all this stuff that's not the dominant picture they put out there yeah they knew the picture existed because they were there taking the picture but that's not the dominant picture that they put out there because I saw the articles come across my timeline because I because I, because I, I subscribe to all these news outlets everything from Wall Street Journal the New York Times the Washington Post to ABC, NBC, CBS, local news affiliates there in Dallas, local news affiliates in, in, in Baltimore. I subscribe to the Baltimore Sun, all of them. I, I follow them. Huffington Post, NBC, MSNBC. That the picture of that's why I put the picture of just Tammy Kemp hugging Botham's mother on the uh, on my YouTube video. Because we haven't seen that. That hasn't been pushed out there like the other pictures have been pushed out there. You have to ask the question why. All right. Okay, so we posted that there for you. Okay, Eli said uh, they forgave them so publicly. Hold on, publicly and if there's this if if there's decision made it's the, it's their decision maybe for a bigger reason and then what people have to understand is that was a um that was a process whoever forgave her that was a process they had to go through it's been a year basically a year since both was killed that was a process they had to go through and brant said when he first found out his brother was killed his, his first instinct was not to forgive her that was a process that he went through all right the other thing uh, people have to understand is that when they got, when you saw the picture of Allison John, when the verdict was read with her arms up and she's looking up, there was a weight that family showed us also with that guilty verdict. There was a weight lifted off of their shoulders 
win that guilty down also. Okay, Sean said me too. I meet I don't know me too what what do you mean, Sean? All right. Look guys, I gotta get out of here. Cause I head out of town tomorrow and I'm not I am done I'm not packed. I'm trying to ship orders out. I've got a lot of work to do. I was up late preparing all this content, uh reading all these updates to this story. Um so be sure to uh, follow us here at the African History Network. Click on the uh, notification button so you know when we go live. Follow me on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P on YouTube. And um, uh, subscribe there as well. Uh, remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So we control the radius of a man's thoughts. You can control the circumference of his actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Remember, right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win Wakanda forever. And we'll talk to you all next time. Peace. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll post the uh, links to uh, all these articles also uh, when we're done. So look out for that as well. I want you to go read these articles uh, also. All right. Who else we have here? We got uh, Sean traveling. Mercies, Michael. Okay, thanks, Sean. Follow a lot of the news. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing radio nine years. You should do nasty syndicated radio. This is something that I, I do the African History Network full time. So right now, MSNBC is on right now because I watch MSNBC between six to ten hours a day and do research all day. MSNBC is on, but it's just muted. So on MSNBC, when they show articles from like New York Times, Washington Post, USA Today, if I haven't already read those articles, I'll make a note, but read them. And I read a lot of articles from NBC News, uh, NBCnews.com also. All right, guys, we'll talk to you all.